Hi, I'm Dr. Elliot Adam from ElliotOracle.com. I'm also the author of Fearless Tarot, How to Give a Positive Reading in Any Situation, which is out now from Llewellyn Books. Uh, it is time for this week's Oracle Reveal. So earlier today on Instagram, I placed up a photo of three different animals, and I asked you to use your intuition and ask yourself which animal's calling to you, because that animal has your message. And the three animals were the hawk, the stag and the giraffe. So if you're just joining us right now, ask yourself if the hawk, the stag, or the giraffe is getting caught in your head because that animal has your message. For those of you who picked the hawk spirit, the card says, let your spirit be your guide. And hawk is the messenger of the animal kingdom. Uh, he's much like the messenger god Hermes or Mercury from Greek mythology. He delivers messages. And so if we see hawk or we're attracted to hawk, it could indicate that you want to pay attention. Uh, spirit might be trying to tell you something right now. Uh, Hawk is also able to circle around the situation from afar. So this is a wonderful animal archetype for putting something in perspective instead of feeling stressed out about it if it's like right before you. Um, the first card for Hawk is where it's best to place your focus this next week. And we got the Two of Swords. This is a card of in between. For the Hawk people, it's not like you're in your future yet and you're also not in the past. You're in this amorphous middle place. And a lot of times this can make us feel uncomfortable because we want certainty and answers and guarantees that what we're doing is exactly correct. But the Two of Swords is all about making peace with the in-between. The woman on the Two of Swords is between the sky and the sea, the new moon and the full moon. She's also balanced between the two swords. And she has a blindfold, meaning she can't see what's coming up next. But she's centered, she's calm, and she's serene. And it's because she takes her cues from nature. In the in-between times in nature, uh, like dawn or dusk, uh, the atmosphere changes, the sky becomes pink, the animals start to uh, get ready for bed, or the nocturnal animals start to call. And there's a serene uh, sort of presence that happens at those moments. And the Two of Swords is telling you, make peace with the twilight right now in your life. Uh, it doesn't have to be all figured out. It doesn't have to be the glaring light of the next day. Uh, sometimes our most magical transitions happen during these in-between times. Um, the advice from your inner wisdom, uh, if you pick the Two of Swords, is another Benevolent Swords card and the Six of Swords. This is a card of resignation, letting go, and also trusting where the flow is taking you. This is a river scene, and we see these figures who are refugees. They're leaving behind their old land. They're going toward the new. This could be a time of transition for Hawk, a major time of transition, and it's important that you're going with the current. Notice that although these are swords cards, the element of water really plays so uh, strongly in them. And so this could be a time where you're really tuning in with your feelings, but falling into harmony with them, not trying to control them with your thought pattern, uh, but instead just surrendering to where they're taking you because there's something magical and transformative that's really happening. And finally, the mythic archetype that is going to help you is another figure in a boat. It's Odysseus. Uh, here he is uh, also going over the waters. And Odysseus is the, uh, he's strategic. Uh, he's uh, Odysseus of the many ways. He's wise. He finds solutions to problems. And he also navigates on the water for 20 years. This can indicate that you're going through an emotional journey right now. You're needing to let your mind uh, be in harmony with your feelings right now. It's not just enough to have these two separate parts of yourself. So if you've been living too much in your head, these cards could indicate maybe it's time to feel a sensation below your neck. Uh, and if you're too much in your feelings, if you're too much in the torrid emotions and swept out to sea, Odysseus could say it's time to be more clever. It's time to maybe uh, rise up and elevate and bring that energy to a place of perspective, especially when we see the airy hawk. So that's hawk. Uh, the next animal we got is the stag spirit, and this card says take the lead. And stag is known for leadership. It takes charge. Uh, it's a noble animal. And so this could be a time where you don't want to wait for someone else to take the lead or make the first move or initiate the change that you're looking for. The stake could say, you need to do it. You need to get up and say, you know what? I'm a leader. I'm going to actually do this. I'm not going to wait to follow anybody here. So stag could be something you're attracted to if you're really needing to awaken that inner leader. 
Um, the first card for Stag is where it's best to place your focus this next week. And there's the Devil card. Now, before you all freak out, uh, I find that the Devil card comes up right before we're about to make a huge breakthrough. And let me explain. Everyone's got that voice uh, in their head that is akin to the Devil. He's the inner saboteur. He's the voice that tells you the lie, that you're limited, that you're stuck, that you're nothing, that you're worthless. But everyone's also got that other voice, which is like an angel on their shoulder, which is like, keep going, look at your higher perspective, transcend the challenge. If we're looking at the stag right now, it might be a time where you're taking leadership in the face of your shadow. A lot of times the devil archetype within us will pipe up right before we're about to make a huge breakthrough. It just needs that one more step. And that's when that voice comes in and says, are you sure you want to take that step? What if you fail? What are people going to say about you? Uh, maybe they won't like you. Maybe you're going to be proven as the sham or fraud or whatever you want to call it. And what you're needing to do is be courageous and still go toward that best life, even if you don't uh, feel 100% certain internally. The devil is telling you to stand up to any self-limiting behaviors or beliefs this week. And so it's so important that you stand up to your shadow and you have courage and you take action anyway. Um, advice from your inner wisdom is actually the nine of cups. Here it is. It's showing that life is a banquet in front of you. Uh, I love that uh, you know quote from Rosalind Russell from Auntie Mame, where she says, life is a banquet and most poor suckers are starving to death. Uh, the Nine of Cups is telling you there's a banquet in front of you. You're not eating it. You're maybe so worried about what that little inner critic is saying that you're not really getting to the business of enjoying your life. The Nine of Cups is also a card of preparation. The merchant has meticulously set up the uh, table with these nine golden cups all in a row. So this could be a time when you're really setting the table for your own future success. And this is what's going to lead towards your own personal breakthrough. I just feel like this is a time to be more satisfied with yourself and your accomplishments. And so it's important to stand up to that shadow. And then the mythic archetype that will help you is Clotho. She's the youngest of the three fates and she spins the thread of life. She's saying that we're constantly in the process of spinning our own thread of life and that things aren't finished right now, that instead we really need to pay attention to the pattern that we're weaving right now in our lives. So you really want to make sure that the tapestry you're creating is more akin to that Nine of Cups energy than it is to the limitations of the Devil card. And then finally, we have the giraffe, which says, see the big picture. And giraffe is an archetype of uh, perspective, looking at things from above. Uh, it has the long neck, which really gives it that unique vantage point. Uh, first card for giraffe is where it's best to place your focus. We got the five of wands. This card can indicate that in the next week, you're going to be up against some competing opinions or people with strong personalities. Five of Wands has these five adolescents all trying to prove that they're correct, they're right, they're the one who's uh, got it all together. And when we see the Five of Wands, I always tell people, rise above it. And especially with that giraffe, you just want to crane your neck above all the squabbling around you and the noise and instead stay true to you. Keep your perspective on that higher perspective. Um, you also got the advice from your inner wisdom, which is actually the Five of Pentacles. So two fives. Fives in the tarot are traditionally challenging. This is going to indicate that you're being challenged. But challenges are what make us better. We don't get better when everything is just going swimmingly well and it's just the sun card every day and everything's uh, all coming up roses. We really get the chance to prove ourselves when we are tested in some way. And the Five of uh, Pentacles is all about really trusting in your own song, your own self-worth, not comparing yourself maybe to what other people are doing, not devaluing yourself because other messages around you are giving you that signal that you're somehow less than, but instead really reaching within, not being a victim to what's happening around you and keeping your eyes on the bigger picture. And then finally, the mythic archetype who can help you with that is the celestial centaur Chiron. He's all about healing. I think that there's a challenge being presented for Giraffe, but there's also healing to be found in it. And Chiron is the one who takes control and is able to transcend the challenge and to really get the lesson out of it. So if you are attracted to Chiron uh, and uh, this message, this could be a time where you're really healing where the conflict is happening and you're also finding the way to transcend it. 
And that is this week's Oracle. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can always check me out at elliotoracle.com. Otherwise, I have, uh, hope you all have a safe and happy holiday. And I will again see you next week. So do take care of yourselves.